you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brahma018. Link in the description. Do it now. How's it going everyone? Brahma here, back again as always with another FIFA 21 tactics video for you. If you're new to this, this is the series where I show you how to recreate and adapt real life systems and tactics so that they'll actually work in game. We have a plethora of different tactics for you to check out if you haven't done so already. Um, but if you have and you're ready for another video, then welcome along to today where we are recreating Ralph Harsen Hootel's Southampton system. Absolutely taking the Premier League by storm as of recording this. They're doing very, very well indeed. And it's a sharp contrast to, you know, um, a while ago since um, that dreaded 9-0 defeat against Leicester. All of a sudden they've turned it around and they're really looking good um, in recent times. So if you are new to these series, what I'll do is I'll show you any position changes that we do first of all with the uh, formation. And then we'll go into the tactics um, and I'll show you and sort of explain how that works. And then we'll finish off with the player instructions. And I will be suggesting suitable players for you to sign if you're on career mode um, for every position. So, um, without further ado, let's begin. So, we have the formation here. And it is a, it is a I guess you would say it's a 4-4-2. But, um, you know, there's a lot of different sort of elements to it you know the wingers will often come in and, and play like uh, sort of central attack midfielder sometimes they're running behind a lot they're very versatile um, and it's quite varied so what we've done here is we've gone for a 4-4-2 holding formation so you've got the two uh, defensive midfielders however what you'll notice in that holding formation is that the two wingers will be set as cams so what you want to do here is actually set these as left and right attacking midfielders as you can see there um, and that will um, absolutely change their roles compared to if they're a cam they will play more like wingers but you've still got that emphasis on them coming inside into those central spaces um, and those little pockets that will form and then it replicates their role a whole lot better. So it's it's really it's a, a real game changer as well. What I've noticed. Couple that with the instructions that we're gonna I'm gonna show you for these two players. Um, you know, it really replicates their roles quite effectively. So um, certainly the best way to do it. Other than that, there are no position changes. Obviously, we have these two as holding midfielders, um, particularly Ward Prowse. Some people might sort of be a bit puzzled by that, but um, you will notice a stark difference if you have central midfielders rather than holding midfielders i can assure you you'll be a lot more vulnerable so trust me it does still work fine they will still replicate their roles as best as you can on fifa um you know to that degree so moving on to the tactics now we can sort of talk about the system a little bit more here you know high tempo again lots of pressing um a lot of movement creating and exploiting space through pace and movement but not just any sort of movement, lots of clever movement, um, lots of pre-worked patterns of play. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a wide range that, that Southampton will attack with and will build up with. Um, and you'll see that on the gameplay on the right-hand side as well. So first off, defensively, we have press after possession loss. So generally, yeah, they will look to, you know, execute a counter press. Sometimes they may just instigate a press in the middle of a game, say the opposition are playing it around the back, sometimes you'll notice, so maybe like Danny Ings or Shea Adams, someone like that will start pressing and then the rest of the team goes with them. What you do to replicate that is in game, you use the D pad to do to put on team press. So it's down and then left on the D pad, and then you can instigate presses in certain situations when you want. So it gives you a lot of freedom to have press after possession loss. Otherwise, sometimes they bed back into their shape, they regain their shape, um, and then they look to win the ball a little bit lower. Um, and then counter on their opposition. So again, gives them that variety in ways of attacking and also winning the ball back. With defensive width, we have this on four. So a little bit wider, not quite too narrow. Uh, but you've got the, the narrowest one of the sort of midway point. Um, and the reason why is it's, you're just trying to give the, um, well, the wide men in general, the fullbacks and the wingers, a bit more option and a bit more of a platform for them to do that. Um, you know, to, to get out wide to the opposition players um, and try and stop crosses, you know, pretty much, which you see a lot of in the uh, in the gameplay as well. Still relatively narrow, so you're not going to have the opposition 
playing through you all the time, hopefully not depending on, um, you know, you saw the sort of run that they make. Um, and then moving on to depth, we have this on eight. So again, they play with a high line to help that sort of pressing game. But we move this from 10 to eight um, so that you just got a little bit more leeway. Again, this is what we've been doing a lot in these videos, particularly for FIFA 21. Um, if they play a high line, rather than having it on 10, we have this on 8. Just sort of drop off a little bit. They're still playing a high line, but it gives them a little bit more protection against balls in behind and over the top, which are very overpowered on this game. Offensive style, we have possession. Again, they switch between sort of patient build-up, playing through the thirds, and then looking to sort of uh, bypass midfield, playing behind, play down the, the channels, boot long balls down the channels for them to use utilize counter-attacking uh, sort of patterns of play but you get that emphasis with the um with the player instructions that we will move on to with players running in behind so again gives you that sort of balance with attacking width we have this on seven it's the highest you get in the more balanced and varied um sort of section before it gets to really wide so again you can still give a little bit of options in terms of uh, short passing players coming a little bit closer to pick up the ball and playing on from there but um then you've also helps you to create a little bit more space, which is what this, this system is, is massively about, creating um, you know, space for other people to run into, a lot of third man runs, which is very, very important. With players in the box, we have this on seven. So you've got three to four players in the box. And obviously, with a 4-4-2, or whatever you may call it, but with two strikers on the pitch, you are obviously going to be seeing more players in the box because then you might have a winger or two in the box as well uh, in those crossing situations. And finally, for corners and free kicks, as always in these videos, we move this up to four. Then it will leave you two men back and then one man on the edge of the area, which is enough to deal with any opposition counter-attack because they will always pull 10 of their men out of the 11 back for the corner. But then you add another body into the box as well. So it just gives you a little bit more of an option, um, a little bit more threat in those set-piece situations. So that's it for the tactics. And I should say before we move on to the instructions, something that I forgot to mention at the start of the video. One, you'll notice that we've got Stevens in centre-back rather than Vestergaard, despite the fact that Vestergaard is um, you know, the mainstay in the team, really. The reason why is because he has 33 pace on this game. Stevens is a little bit faster, although still very slow, too slow for this system. Uh, 59 pace. You cannot have a centre-back on this game at all with 33 pace, it just does not work, particularly if you're playing online, they are going to exploit that um, to the high heavens, simple as, so you, you just don't do it, just don't do it, you need faster centre-backs, um, and someone with 33 pace, unfortunately that leads Vestergaard out, because he's a very good player, um, but on this game, he just won't work, he will be exploited, and second of all, what I'll say is, for this tactic, you will have a lot of fun with this tactic, I, I, I had a lot of fun um, when preparing it, when testing it out and stuff, um, in certain moments, but that will depend on, on how the opposition AI and the AI in general just work because, you know, EA still can't create a working football game. They still have this archaic mess um, that is FIFA. And unfortunately, you'll, you'll just notice a lot of things, you know, less opportunity to counter-attack because the opposition don't commit men forward. They don't try and um, play risk-worthy balls. They don't put crosses in. Um, and then your guys, you can't instigate a press. It's all you. Um, the other AI won't do it. It's just a, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. Um, so you will have fun in stages when it decides to work. But a lot of times as well, obviously, you, you like in the game, play the right side. Sometimes you find yourself a bit frustrated on the AI. But what I will say is a lot of fun with this tactic um, when it goes your way. So that's it for the sort of housekeeping and the, and the tactics now we can move on to the player instructions and what we tend to do here is we start off with the keeper we work our way through the field talking about each individual instructions and along the way i will suggest suitable players for you to sign if you're playing on uh career mode um so starting off with the keeper we have alex mccarthy here and he's sweeper keeper and comes across his and this has pretty much been the same for every single tactic i've done this year on fifa um sweeper keeper Obviously, when you're playing a high line, that's needed anyway because he's that extra line defence. But either way, you just want that extra bit of protection and someone coming out if balls are being played over the top and you hope that he will be doing that. So, again, like I say, gives you more protection. It's an extra defender, basically. And for saving on crosses, we have them on comes of crosses just to have them a bit more active, you know, Passive keepers just aren't as effective on this. Whereas in those situations, crossing, for example, 
they're quite overpowered. They have a bit of an invisible wall around them so that they can claim the ball easily. Um, so that will just relieve pressure from you. Onto the centre backs, you don't need to change anything here. Uh, stable while attacking and also normal interceptions as well. As I mentioned, you will need faster centre backs, uh, plain and simple. You know, the likes of Stevens, even him, who's on 59 pace. Um, I mean, you won't be able to see it on the screen, but yeah, he's got 59 pace. Bednarek on 64, too slow, just too slow. Um, so you will need faster centre backs, unfortunately. Lee, um, you know, that is just the reality of the gameplay this year. Uh, moving on to the two wing backs now. Uh, really like these two um, these two wing backs in not just in FIFA but for real life as well. I think they're very, very good and they've adapted to the system um, impressively. You know, pretty, pretty seamless actually. Ryan Bertrand and Kyle Walker Peters both have the same instructions that is join the attack and overlap as well. Um, nice and attacking. You'll see the overlap is very, very handy in this system, particularly when Walcott and Gineppo, in this case, are playing as a ram and a lamb rather than, you know, outright wingers. Therefore, they're coming narrow a bit more. Those overlaps will be more handy. We've not moved these up to wing back, so just because it's a 4 4 2 or 4 2 2 2, whatever you want to call it. Um, so there's a little bit less protection, you know, compared to, let's say, if it was a 4 3 3. Um, you know, I've noticed in the 4-4-2, particularly like the Monaco one, you're a little bit more exposed. At least it gives you slightly more uh, protection when needed. Moving on to the two central midfielders now, we'll start off with Oriol Romeo, who is, of course, there as the more defensive, aggressive midfielder, um, you know, to, to break up the play. I guess the ball winning midfielder, you could call him if you're talking in uh, football manager roles. Um, so we got him on cut passing lanes, and it's important to stress that, yeah, what we've also spoke about in these videos, in this series often, is that man marking on this game doesn't work because your players won't mark, particularly the midfielders, don't follow the opposition midfielders so they don't man mark. So you go to cut passing lanes anyway. Also though, uh, Southampton's press is quite lane orientated rather than a man press because you can have something like Leeds at Marcelo Bielsa for example which is what I call a man press which is a man marking system but then they'll press and then they, they try and limit the passing options by actually physically marking the man whereas Southampton on the other hand which is what I call a lane press is more pressing whilst trying to cut the lane so you sort of try to rather than going man for man uh, you know you try and get in the way and prevent the pass that way so they all have they both have their merits and their drawbacks etc uh, but Southampton are instigate more of a lane press anyway so that just plays into that um, obviously as the ball winning midfielder we have him on stay about while attacking as well um, Although, having said that, it is also the same for James Ward Prowse as well. The difference is purely going to be for the suitable players that I suggest. So, with Romeo, obviously, you're looking for a ball in midfielder. With Ward Prowse, who obviously takes set pieces in this system as well, um, you're looking for that more creative spark. Um, someone who's who's got higher attributes in the likes of you know, set pieces, passing, etc. Um, so, you know, really the only difference in terms of that is obviously, yeah, the, the, the suitable players that you want. You want that more creative midfielder. One of them. It doesn't matter which way around, really. I just went with this for the sake of it. Um, but yeah, basically that's what I'm saying. So both of them have the same roles, uh, which makes that fairly easy. Moving on to the two wingers now. We have Fia Walker and um, Musa Gineppo in this, uh, in this system. We have the one come back on defence both, of course, because then that's going to help you get your two banks of four if and when needed. And then we also have getting to the box of crosses as well. As we alluded to earlier on with the players in the box, obviously you're going to want three to four players um, in those crossing situations. They like to overload um, the box in those, those areas and those situations. So that helps you to do that with getting to the box for crosses. Positioning freedom, we have this on drift wide. So I mentioned earlier how... The best way to replicate this is having them as, say, Walcott as a right attacking midfielder and now then have him on drift wide. This is the best way to recreate his role on FIFA. Um, it just works the best, you know, because he'll pick up those those areas when he needs to. But then when you're looking to, say, play balls down the channels, which is what they sometimes do, look for getting balls into space, you want him to come out wide sometimes, then he'll drift wide in certain situations. But then let's say if it's on the left side and Walcott is, of course, on the right, then he'll come inside centrally and look to get in behind that way, um, which is going to be very, very handy indeed. And it's the same with Gineppo on the other side as well. They both have the uh, the same roles. Um, 
pretty much it yeah there's not really too much more to say about that in terms of the players that you're looking for obviously you want pacey players with a lot of movement but you're also looking for those stats such as the likes of finishing and crossing as well particularly finishing because i think um you know sort of with them playing more centrally they're going to get into more goal scoring areas so that sort of thing is going to be handy as well Next up, on to the strikers, and again, both the same uh, instructions for uh, for both of them. So it was a little bit of a problem sort of working out how to sort of replicate this because the thing is with Ings and Adams is, uh, well, we're going with Ings and Adams for this. Sometimes, of course, it might be um, other players, but, you know, you've got a bit of variation there. Sometimes one of them will drop off. Sometimes they're running behind. Uh, they might drift wide, etc. So we're trying to get the balance as much as possible. And what I found is that I've had them both on drift wide and both on getting behind. And then we also had comeback on defense as well. So again, it's about exploiting the space that we talked about earlier. Creating space, exploiting space, utilizing pace. Again, it's a very pacey team. Lots of um, mobility in there. So you're utilizing that as much as possible. And that's part of the reason why it's really fun. Because you've just got so much movement. So much options created by that movement. So you have that on getting behind and drift wide as well. Um, just to utilize their strength. And also come back on defense um, to help with that sort of defensive shape really. What you'll find is that they always, they always come back and then they look to work the ball either um, through the thirds or... Um, they'll look to try and utilize their pace and counter quickly but because they're so pacey they can drop you know sort of track back and then still hit teams on the counter so very very handy indeed as you'll see in the gameplay on the right hand side if you've sort of been checking on that every so often um you know again it they, they have a lot of versatility sometimes things drops off anyway because just of the way the runs are forming say walcott's overlapping adams is running in behind then he'll sort of pick up that space um in the areas that's been vacated and then you go from there so it, it it just works out it really works out um and it's the best way of creating that sort of versatile attacking approach so that's it for this video then guys as always if you do have any questions about the system don't hesitate to get at me in the comment section and i'll do my best to answer um all questions i try and reply to as many comments as i can i'll see pretty much every comment unless some sneak through the net which they occasionally do um so i really do appreciate that if you've enjoyed the video then please do leave a like but most importantly subscribe to the channel for more regular gaming content ring the bell as well so you get notifications every time i upload don't forget to check out my second channel as well brahma ball hopefully we can get some uh, videos up on that soon where we talk about real football and also give me a follow on twitter as well the link to that is in the description and i know we are going to finish the video off there thank you so much for watching and until next time I will see you soon. Come on.